Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Today, we are going to be talking about the Dimensional Robo deck. Um, by the way, happy Friday, guys. Uh, a lot of you are happy that it's a weekend. I know I am. This week was really long for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking about the Dimensional Robo um, Future Fight today. Uh, we're speeding along quite fast. Uh, for those of you who might be wondering, where the Blau video is after the Victor um, deck came out and then I skipped straight to Gallup. It's because I kept trying out Blau deck after Blau deck after Blau deck after Blau deck and it was taking way too much time and I just think that deck is very terrible. Um, the support that they gave is not very good. I couldn't even like very well make like a palpable deck out of it that I could feel um, good presenting to you guys. So I decided to skip over Blau um, and go straight to Dimension Police. Um, I did do um, Gallop already, which you guys should have saw, um, and then I'm doing Dimensional Robo now. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Um, Dimensional Robo is kind of a deck that has always been focused on blowing your opponent's, uh, so it's an archetype, but it blows your opponent's guards off the circle, um, off the guardian circle, uh, so that they have to either guard more or they can't guard at all or after they attack and it blows their stuff off. So um, kind of an interesting archetype. They got some new cards in here and we're gonna start off with the grade threes. So starting off with their grade threes, we run nine grade threes. We run four of the new grade three super dimensional robo Dynexus. Uh, Dynexus has two Vanguard abilities. Uh, the first one is a Vanguard auto ability that says when your G unit strides, you can counter blast one, choose a grade three card with dimensional robo in its name from your drop zone and put it on the bottom of your deck. If you do, you look at the top four cards from your deck Call up to one dimensional robo card from its uh, in its card name from among them. Choose one of your vanguards and it gets the original power of the called unit until the end of the turn. So what this means is that um, number one, this allows you this skill allows you to recycle your grade threes. So um, your other skills that check for grade threes like Magna Die Bird or um, Magna Die Bird uh, or it's actually not in this build, but Magna Die Bird. Um, dipole kind of boosts your grade three so you want to call them to the rear guard circle to kind of attack they can also intercept with the second ability of die nexus which is a uh, continuous vanguard generation break one ability it says all of your grade three units with d robo in its name um i'm just gonna shorten dimensional robo for d robo in this video so if i'm saying d robo a lot you don't know what that means that's what that means um so all of your grade three units with d robo in its name uh, gets plus 10,000 shield and the intercept ability, meaning that they can move themselves from the front row rear guards to the guardian circle uh, when you are being attacked and you are in the process of guarding. So each uh, grade three acts as a 10k guard, which is actually pretty solid, but it's just really bad when you don't ride into this card. Um, things can go really bad for you. Uh, then we have three uh, true ultimate dimensional robo great die kaiser uh, great die kaiser has three abilities the first one is an act vanguard legion 22,000 ability um it legions with ultimate dimensional robo great Dayusha, which is this card right here um and then the second ability is during your turn if this unit is in legion and the number of cards in your souls uh, with dimensional robo in its name is three or more this unit gets plus one critical and then the third ability is when this unit's drive check reveals a grade three card if your legion mate's critical is two or more, which means that uh, this is your legion mate, your legion mate has its own critical power, all that stuff. Um, however, your legion mate's critical does not affect the total critical of what's hitting your opponent when you're hitting their vanguard. So um, just be aware of that. And so if your um, legion mate's critical is two or greater, you can counter boss one, choose one of your opponent's guardians, retire it, and the unit's effects with cannot be hit is nullified. So it does nullify PGs, um, nullifies other things as well. Um, you know, G Guardians, uh, this nullifies anything from like G Guardians, PGs, any of that stuff. So it is a really good last ditch effort. If you can't stride, you can Legion and try to go for the effect of it. And it's also attacking for two critical. Um, so like I said, uh, this is Ultimate Dimensional Robo Great Dayusha. This is the Legion Mate. The only reason why we're running this card is because it's a Legion Mate for Great Dykeiser. Um, so what Great Dayusha does is it has a continuous limit break for Vanguard skill. It says during your turn, if the number of cards named D-Robo in your soul is three or more, this unit gets plus 2,000 power and plus one critical. So this unit getting plus one critical 
um, allows Dykeiser to have its third skill active. And then the second skill of this card, um, having three cards in the soul or more, and it being a legion, allows this card to gain a critical. So makes up for the fact that you don't gain a critical from Dayusha, but you do gain a critical from Dykeiser. So it is attacking for two crit at all times, as long as you have at least three cards in your soul. Um, then it has two continuous abilities after that. The first one is a continuous Vanguard Rearguard skill that says if you have a non-dimensional police Vanguard, uh, or sorry, Dimension Police Vanguard and or Rearguard, this unit gets plus 2,000 power. Uh, so what that means is, honestly, you'll never worry about that skill in this deck. This is a uh, skill for back when we used to be able to run multiple clans in the same decks, um, but that is no longer a thing. So we will be running all Dimension Police cards, so you never have to worry about that. Um, then we have a Vanguard skill that says if you have a card named Super Dimensional Robo Daisha in your soul, then this unit gets plus 2,000. Also, another skill that you won't have to worry about because we do not run that card in this deck. Uh, moving on to our Grade 2s, we have 10 Grade 2s. We have uh, 4 Dimensional Robo Dipole. Uh, Dipole has two abilities. When it's placed on the Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, you can choose up to one card from your hand and reveal it. If neither that card or your Vanguard is a Grade 3 card with Dimensional Robo in its name, this unit gets minus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. So basically you want to play this card. If you're just now riding to two, uh, you can play this card, reveal a grade three so it can keep its 10K. Um, if you don't have it or you can't reveal it, I would just say still riding is worth anyways because at the end of the turn, it goes back up to 10K. Uh, you'll just have to attack weak for a turn. Um, then it's rear guard ability is continuous rear guard. Uh, if you have a grade four Vanguard with dimensional robo in its name, uh, then this unit and all of your grade 3 rearguards get plus 5,000 power. So pumps itself and pumps uh, grade 3 rearguards. My, my favorite thing to do in this deck is maybe play two of these in the back row and then just have grade 3s in the front, just swinging for 21, 21, 21. Then we have four dimensional robo um, die bearers. What die bearers does is when this unit is placed on rearguard circle, you choose one of your vanguards and until the end of the turn you give it a skill. It says when this unit attacks Vanguard, you can counter boss one, draw a card. So, um, very useful card in the early game to kind of like draw into more stuff that you need, um, or maybe just draw into some additional guard. Uh, so yeah, it can be very good. <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm whew, just exhausted, just came off of work. Um, but our next grade two we run two of is Dimensional Robo Die Crusher. Uh, Die Crusher skill, it has two abilities. Uh, the first one is when it's placed on the rear guard circle. If we have a grade three or greater Vanguard, Soul Charge one. And if the card that's Soul Charged is a D-Robo card, then it gets plus 2,000 power. Then the second ability is Auto Rearguard once per turn, Generation Break one skill. Uh, when your drive check reveals a grade three card with D-Robo in its name, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. So if it comes to 21 on the turn that you played it, um, if the card that you Soul Charged was a D-Robo and you check a grade three. So 21 is a pretty good number. Um, obviously it makes your opponent block for two or more cards, which is always good. Um, if not, it's just 11, which still hits your opponent's Vanguard usually, which is good. Uh, then we have four dimensional robo die supporter. Uh, die supporter has two skills. The first one is while you're playing, um, paying cards from hand for the cost of stride, uh, and choosing cards from the drop zone for the cost of an ability, um, a card with dimensional robo and its original card name. This unit may be chosen as a grade three. So basically, you can use this card as stride fodder, as um, or selecting it for the skill of something. So, Whew, let me get all this yawning out. Um, but yeah, you can use it as uh, for Dynexus skill to put it to the bottom. You can use it to stride um, as long as you are striding uh, a, D a D Robo stride, basically. Um, and the second ability is when this card is discarded from the hand for the cost of stride, choose one of your units with D-Robo in its name, it gets plus 4,000 power, and then you choose up the one card with D-Robo from your drop zone and put it into your soul. So sometimes you can uh, get away with having die battle already in your drop zone, and so you can use the skill of die supporter to move die battle into the soul, and then if you're not using the soul directly, you can soul blast out die battle and then give one of your, uh, give your Vanguard plus 3k. Uh, then we have four dimensional robo die magnal uh, die magnal what it does is it has three abilities first one is sentinel the second one uh, sentinel means that you can't run more than four types of this card in your deck so you can't run more than four sentinel cards um, the second one is when this unit is placed on the guard circle 
You can choose one of your units with D-Robo on its name, discard a card, and it cannot be hit. So you can PG any dimensional Robo Vanguard or Rear Guard. Then we have um, the third ability, when this unit is placed on Guard Circle, choose one of your Vanguards with D-Robo on its name, and it gets plus 4,000 until the end of the battle for each card with D-Robo in, uh, in your soul. So it can also, um, uh, if you have a lot of cards in your soul that have D-Robo in its name, you can play this card as a one card block, which is way better than having to PG and drop a card, um, if it can still do the same thing as the PG. Then we have four Commander Laurel, um, obviously just a staple in this deck. Uh, most D Police decks should be running it, but some uh, choose not to opt the space for it. Um, I choose two uh, to do it because basically the D Robo deck is weaker than other decks, so you need any advantage that you can get. Um, and the skill is when your Dimension Police Vanguard attack hits, you can choose four of your Dimension Police Rear Guards, rest them, and if you do, stand one of your Vanguards. So, uh, very, very good card. Allows you to restand, no mining stripe checks, no anything like that. Uh, so it's just plusing, basically. Um, our last grade one is two dimensional robo die cutter. Uh, die cutter has an auto rear guard ability that says when your unit with dimensional robo and its card name is placed on Vanguard Circle, this unit gets 2000 power until the end of the turn. Then, if the unit that was placed is grade four or greater, then you soul charge one and this unit gets plus 2000 power until the end of the turn. So very, very, very good card. Um, obviously just like helps your, uh, keeps your soul up. And then it also can attack by itself um, on the turn that you stride into some kind of D robo stride. Um, or sorry, just a grade four in general, it just becomes 11K, which is pretty cool. Uh, then we have one Diehawk as our starter, D robo Diehawk. Diehawk has two abilities. The first one is Forerunner, meaning that it can be moved back to a rear guard circle um, if you ride upon it, like most starters in the game, the second ability is an act rearguard skill that says uh, choose four of your rearguards with dimensional robo in its name, put them into your soul. If you have a grade three vanguard with D robo in its name, choose up to one face down card with D robo in its card name from your G zone and stride it on your vanguard. So, what this means is that you can stride when your opponent's grade two, you can stride when your opponent's grade one, you can stride when your opponent's grade zero, as long as you have a dimensional robo grade three vanguard. And then you can shove four cards, including Die Hawk, into the soul. So you can um, just basically shove three other cards into the soul with Die Hawk, and then you can stride, um, which is pretty awesome because it makes it so that you always stride first in this deck. Uh, then for our triggers, we run 12 crit, four heal, uh, four die battle. Like I said earlier, when it's in your soul and it's the main phase, you can choose to put it into your drop zone, basically soul blast it out, and then choose one of your Dimension Police Vanguards, and it gets plus 3,000 power. Uh, then we have Die Moon and Die Wolf, which are vanilla crits, but they have D Robo in the name, which is important. And then we have uh, Dimensional Robo Mechanic Kathy. Kathy is our G Guard heal that allows you to bind itself and bind a heal that's already in the drop when you G Guard uh, with these cards to Counter Charge One or Soul Charge One. Moving on to our G Zone, we have D Robo Combat Commander Magna Diebird. Uh, what Magna Diebird does is it has an act ability that says. Choose a face down card from your G zone with the same name as this unit, turn it face up. So you would flip a Magna Die Bird, and then this unit gets an auto skill. It says when your opponent's guardian is placed, you can soul blast one, reveal the top three cards from your deck. If all of those cards have D Robo in its name, then you put a grade three card from among them into your hand. And if you put a card into your hand, then you choose one of your opponent's guardians and retire it, shuffle your deck. So basically, what this means is that. Whenever your opponent plays any kind of Guardian, um, unless it's a PG, PGs just get around this, so it's not worth using the skill if uh, they get a PG. However, um, it is worth using the skill when you get anything else, like a G Guardian or something like that. So you can actually have your opponent G Guard, and then you can Soul Blast one, check the top three cards. If one of them is a grade three, you can add them to your hand, and you blast the G Guardian off the guard circle, which makes them guard for more, um, which is really good. Then we have our ultimate stride for the Stargate set, um, which is uh, the Zero Dragon of Destroy Star Stark. Um, so Stark says when this unit is placed on Vanguard Circle Counter Boss 2, if you do until the end of the turn, this unit gets minus 2 drive. It does not rest for its attack, and it can attack 3 times. Basically just a really good finisher when your opponents have 5 damage and you meet the requirements to ultimate stride. Um, then we have 2 Bravest Peak X Gallop. Uh, we do run this in the Gallop deck um, very heavily. But in the D-Robo deck, it's a lot different, and you want to run cards at different amounts. 
Uh, so we do run this card for, you know, if your opponent just keeps PGing over and over and over and over and over, uh, you can actually get through them uh, with some Excalibur plays. Uh, it's also a restanding Vanguard, so that's very important to have in this deck when you can. Um, and its ability is Burst Vanguard Circle. When this unit attacks, kind of boss one, choose a face down card from your G zone, turn it face up. Um, if your unit's power is 40,000 or greater, then you get one plus one drive. And at the end of the battle, if this unit's power is 80,000 or greater, you stand it up and this unit gets minus uh, four drive checks. So then uh, we have a continuous generation break three ability after that that says this unit gets plus 10,000 for each face up card in your G zone. So that is generation break three, which means second strider or more or at least G-Guard before you go into this. Um, so pretty good, and I would just keep that in mind. Uh, then we have one GB-8, Dimensional Robo Supreme Commander Ultimate Die King. Ultimate Die King skill is Generation Break 8. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, this unit gets plus 10,000 and a critical for each one of your rear guards. And then at the end of the battle, if your unit's power is 80,000 or greater, then all of your rear guards get 1,000 or 10,000 power for each of this unit's critical. So basically what this means is that you attack in a vanguard, you give your vanguard, you know, plus 50k uh, would be 76k stride. And then if you check a trigger, all vanguard, and then at the end of the battle, since the unit's power was 80,000 or greater, choose all your rear guards and they get 60k. So pretty good. Then we have a uh, two dimensional robo commander admiral final dimax. That is a butt ton of words to say. Um, then it has its ability, which is act a uh, flip and face down copy of it face up in your G zone. If you have a heart card with D Robo in its name, this unit gets plus 10,000 power. Then, if the number of cards in your G zone is two or more, then it gets plus one critical. Then, if the number of cards in your G zone is four or more, then all the units with D Robo in its name in your front row get power plus 5,000 and plus one critical. So, pretty serious effect. Then we have um, 99th generation dimensional Robo uh, Commander Great Die Earth. So, what Great Die Earth does is it has an activation ability. It says Counterblast 2 and flip a copy of itself face up. If we have a heart with Dimensional Robo its name, which we always will, search your deck for up to one Grade 2 and Grade 3 card with Dimensional Robo its name, call it to Rear Guard Circle and shuffle your deck. And then if the face up number of cards in your G zone with D Robo its name is two or more, then this unit gets plus one to critical. So we usually never get the second part of this effect because we usually use this as a first turn stride to set up our board. Um, because we usually have just Diehawk to get to stride. So Diehawk is a huge minus. So we need to get some of those cards back and make it not as hard of a minus. Um, then we run four G Guardians. One um, Oceanic Transformation Atlantis Dolphin. The other three are Great Galactic Beast Zeal. So um, Atlantis Dolphin has a Generation Break 1 ability. that says when this unit is placed on Guard Circle during the battle that your opponent's Vanguard attacked. You can flip a G unit in your... Um, or flip a G Guardian face up. And then if you do, this unit gets plus 5,000 shield for all of your rear guards until the end of the battle. And if this unit's shield is 30,000 or greater, counter charge one, soul charge one. So a very good card. Um, allows you to guard for very big when your opponent's vanguard is attacking, as long as you have like rear guards to do so. And then um, the three great Galactic Beast Zeals, one of my favorite G Guardians in Dimension Police in general, just after the new set. And its skill is when this unit is placed on guard circle, you can choose one of your opponent's units and it gets minus 5,000 power. And then if the number of cards in your damage zone is greater than or equal to uh, your opponent's damage zone, you can counter boss one. If you do, you choose one of your vanguards and it gets plus 5,000 power. So initially you soul blast and then later you counter blast if you have equal or more damage to your opponent to give 5k to your vanguard for the rest of the game. So very, very solid um, effects on the G Guardian. You don't use them as much in this deck as you do Gallop which is why Gallop has five G Guardians and we have four. Uh, so we are opening up our games here to get started on the games. Our area is taking forever to update or um, sorry, turn itself on as usual, not update. Um, so we have Dimensional Robo 1, game one. Uh, we were playing against Blau. Uh, we put cards back shuffle. Uh, the whole time that we've been playing this deck, I'm just forewarning you guys, like, we just had a terrible time, kind of, uh, because our hand never gave us what we wanted, but I did want to showcase these games to you, uh, because the only way to know how strong a deck is, is know how it is when it's weak. 
So you never want to play a deck that's too weak when it's weak, um, in my opinion. But my opponent is also checking hella triggers. Got to draw a trigger on defensive. Got to draw a trigger on uh, offensive and then use Morgan Rod skill. We use Dipole. We can't even search a card. so um, Or we can't even reveal a card so that it doesn't lose power. And then we play four rear guards uh, to the guard circle. And then we attack the vanguard. Uh, we take the damage from, or, or sorry, uh, he takes the damage from our rear guard. He uh, rides, then calls Reamer, Reamer skill, counter charge, soul charge. He attacks for 16, which I take. And then he attacks for 18, which I take as well. He goes into twin drive. Um, I damage tech. Uh, he activates his skill, Morgan Rock, top three, get one. Pass. And then uh, we stand and draw two grade threes. Uh, I put all the skills in the soul to get uh, Die Earth. Um, and then we use the skill of Die Earth, kind of us two, flip, and then call two guys. And then I call a die pole here just in case. So we attack for 26. And Blau is one of those um, things, has one of the PGs where it can just block the rear guard, so. And then the PG goes away, we attack for 15, and then we attack for 31 to crit. And our opponent stands and draws. Um, our opponent strides. Uh, our opponent looks like they were thinking, but then they decide to stride into Meteor Kaiser Victor. They use this skill of their G Guardian to Soul Blast and flip one of their damage face up, turn their G Guard face down. Uh, we guard for 16, and then we no guard the Vanguard, which is 31. Um, so they check one, two, three. And then we take a damage. I have no clue why it's moving so slow. Um, but yeah, we're just going to follow along with it. Um, so our opponent, you know, attacks, restand the Mars, and then attacks us. We go into um, Die Bird, hoping to have, like, a little bit of hope. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's not looking good, this game. Uh, first of all, we're not on Die Nexus, so that's kind of like a lost cause. So we attack a Vanguard. Um, our opponent gets a G Guardian. Uh, we use the skill to Soul Blast 1. Then we check the top three, and unfortunately none of them are grade three. If they were, then this would have gone a lot smoother. Our opponent uh, probably would have just no guarded after that. Um, then our opponent guarded with the uh, 10k. The reason why they're playing them in the rear guard circle is because I use the guard circle to reveal for the effects. Um, so top three, nothing. And then we check one, two, three. Um, and then we attack our opponent for 11. And then we attack our opponent for 20. They take it, getting a heal trigger, power to Vanguard. Um, they stride. They use the skill of their grade two to make themselves one break five. Um, we get attacked for 26. We choose to use the Oceanic Transport to flip one card over. Um, our opponent drive checks one, two, vanilla, and three is a crit trigger. Um, they give the crit all effects to uh, the Mars. I uh, restands, attacks us for 21 to crit. I guard, intercept, and then I take the 16, 
I'm hoping to get some kind of trigger there. Uh, but my opponent attacks for 26 and restands all the rear guards. So I honestly just no guard this because I can't guard the rest if he is to hit a critical here. So um, he doesn't hit a critical, but I don't hit a heal. And that ends up just being straight up game one. Then we're loading up game two here. All right, so we're loading up Dimensional Robo game two. Um, we start with a crappy hand again. We draw by four. Our hand is still crappy, but only because we have to ride Commander Laurel. And then eventually we'll probably have to ride the um, other grade three that's not Dynexus. Our opponent goes, hit to draw trigger, draws. We damage check Dynexus, which is no bueno. Um, we attack, we draw, we draw into a crit, and we check a PG, and then we attack into a heal guard. Um, our opponent rides a 3, we counter charge soul charge, and then attacks for a 16, we no guard. And then um, the draw trigger lets him give power and draw skill. Um... So we shred into the bird, we can't do anything. He can't really block it without uh, have us using the nullification skill. So we actually check two crits and a three, which means that we would have nullified whatever he placed, unless he decided to place that PG. Um, but yeah, we just double crit him. So he goes from three to six um, without a chance to resist us. But I guess just another reason, one of those reasons why 12 crit uh, catches your opponent off guard because they're not expecting you to check the 12 crit. Um, then we have Dimensional Robo Game 3. So we're playing against Blau one more time. Uh, this time we still have a terrible hand. Uh, we draw, we ride, we swing for 12, we get a critical, which is good, but not even what we wanted to check, honestly. Um, my opponent takes two damage, one of the ones that they took was a heal, so they heal off one damage. Then they ride, attack, uh, we take a damage. Uh, they use Morgan Rot skill, top three, add a card. We ride, attack, we don't get a trigger. They don't get a trigger. Then they attack, uh, they get a critical trigger. And a draw trigger, which is broken. And then they draw a card. Uh, we take two. Um, using the skill Morgan Rock, we use the skill to G assist. And we whiff it, which is pretty interesting. Not likely. Um, then our opponent takes his second damage. It's a draw trigger, power to draw. And then our opponent rides, attacks for 16, and then attacks with Vanguard. And then our opponent checks top three, adds a heal, another heal to his hand. We um, go for the G assist again. This time we get Dynexus, thankfully. Um, we stride into Great Dire Earth. We use the skill of Great Dire Earth to bring out a card. Uh, so we check top, we call a Dynexus to the rear guard circle, and then our Vanguard gets 11k. We use the skill to call a 2 and a 3. So again, um, calling the 3 to the rear guard circle, like I told you guys. Then we attack for 42. Uh, this gets PG'd easily. We check one. It's a perfect guard type thing. Uh, check two, Great Dayusha. And check three, heal. So we do heal down to three damage, which really, really helps more than people think.
and then we attack. Um, they don't do anything with the rest of our attacks. And then they stride into Blazer Block Hooger. Using the skill to Soul Blast, uh, turn Barde, uh, or sorry, turn the damage face up and the G Guard back face down. And then they use the skill of Bard, counter boss one, deal a damage. And then um, our Vanguard gets attacked for 26. And then uh, we do crit all effects to Vanguard. Then our opponent rerides. Uh, we go for a two to pass. Our opponent puts it all on the rear guard. And then we get attacked for 16. We were taking it, hoping to check a trigger. We did not, however, so we just G guard the last one. Um, however, his he lets me know that his power would have went down. Um, so we actually take the heal back and the G guard back, and then we end up just guarding with a five. Um, so then we use Die Bird skill, or uh, sorry, we're in the middle of using uh, Die Nexus skill. Top four call a card. Die Cutter, uh, we shuffle. Then we use the skill of uh, Magna Die Bird. We attack for 40 just in case he's going to let Commander Laurel uh, do its thing. Which it does not look like he intends to have any part of that. So uh, we do check a critical giving the power to Rear Guard. And then we attack for uh, 16. And we attack for 25. Alright. We pass over, our opponent strides with Neptune Block Luger. Uh skill goes into Sane, um, our opponent deals them to all the damage. Full Blast, flip G-Guard face down, counter charge, um, no guard. Um, so our opponent checks a crit, gives all the power rear, uh, uses the skill to discard two, re-ride, thankfully he doesn't have any counter boss left so he can't do this accurately. Um, we use Zeal. Uh, we decided to just instead, we don't have a soul, so we decided to just use uh, Oceanic Transport instead. Counter Charge, Soul Charge. Um, our G Zone goes back, or our G Unit goes back to the G Zone. We guard for 21. And then we double intercept. Uh, it's 26, and I just realized that, so. We decided to just double intercept because our grade 3 is kind of 10k's. We draw. And then we go into Exhale up here. Uh, we use the skill to counter boss 1 on Shy Skill. Look at top 4, call a D Robo card. Banger gets plus 5k. Uh, then we call a die barist. Um, and then we attack with X Gallop skill. It gets a lot of power. Um, it gets PG. We check one, two, heal trigger. Um, power of my Vanguard heal. Heal trigger, power to Vanguard, heal. So that double heal is just broke. And then since it is over um, 80, restands. And then he lets it hit, so we use Commander Laurel. Um, attack for 101. Um, and he figures that he can't guard it. So he tries to see all the guard in his hand. 
it's just barely enough to not guard the uh, 101,000. So yeah, that ends up being game three. And that, yeah, that ends up being the future fight for our dimensional robo future fight. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like down below. It really helps a lot more than you guys think. Smash that like button, love that like button, care for that like button. And then also hit the subscribe button to keep up with the channel and also support. Also click the bell button next to the subscribe button to stay updated with when I post videos or when I don't, it will give you a little notification in your bells, which is your notifications. Then in the description down below, uh, you can check out our social medias, which is Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, and if you want to support the channel a little more than liking and subscribing, there is those options down below as well, which is our Patreon and our merch store. With that being said, that has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I am Josh from Cardfight Empire. Got you guys. I'm Josh from Cardfight Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.